What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, <laughs> Dre and Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. <laughs> Where a drink mind speaks sober thoughts. Y'all, look, Lex do not be playing with me when I don't, I don't do the intro right. <laughs> you seen I gave you a song. And it's like, sometimes I be trying to add a little flavor. I'm like Beyonce, somebody's getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> don't play with I mean, Don't play with the production. I be trying to give a little flavor. You know, switch it up. You can get a but flavor she don't not be feeling it. Like, I anytime don't. I say something that's not on script, she be looking at I me. I don't like Y'all, it. Y'all, she, she really be under the table. Her knee be like this. <laughs> Bitch. Well, I don't want to speak so much. Push that shit out. Push that shit out. I do Push that shit out. I like <laughs> shit to start a certain way. Now, if you don't, oh, you kind of I'm going to dock your pay. I'm just playing. I can't dock her pay. It sounded good. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, what's been up, Miss Girl? I don't know. I miss you. <gasps> miss me? I, you act like I went somewhere. I don't be going nowhere. I, know. <laughs> I just don't be outside. You know how people be like, they love they nigga so much, they want to live in their skin? That's how I be feeling about you sometimes. This is my friend. I want to live in your skin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, y'all. <laughs> like me and Lex are, y'all don't understand, and it's and I know it's mutual. That's why I said that because she's trying to frame, but we are obsessed yeah. with each other. Bitch, please, you be obsessed with me. <laughs> First of all, and let me I'm tell y'all what Dre, you. Drea last night for some reason some guy was capping to her about what his friend bought for his girlfriend for a special occasion or something. No, it's not for some reason. <laughs> We don't have this, to get into details. We don't have to get into details. Oh, so why did you say for some reason? Because well, no, I said you called me and I felt like it was like a story you should just tell me later. I'm knocked out sleep. She like, best friend. Tell me why this nigga capping. And I'm like, why well, I'm on the phone. They y'all arguing in the back seat. Like, you're lying. Cause he said that his friend bought somebody a forty eight thousand dollar bag. And I didn't believe it. It was definitely capped. Dre said it was And capped. that long head girl ain't giving forty eight thousand. Nah, this is where I didn't want to go. That's why I said we're not going to give the details. That head so long, bitch. <laughs> it's, it's longer than an eight mile. And I ain't never even been to Detroit. I'm just going off of what Eminem said. It's long. That's how long it is. This is... This, <laughs> let me get, take this and put this right here for a second. So, it's just like every time... I already know when you be drinking because the phone calls just start to flowing in. And you know me. I was in bed watching Transformers. It don't happen often, though, because I don't drink that no, much anymore. No, you don't drink that much anymore. But you know what's crazy? So, um, <clears throat> I miss being the wine girl. I kind of do. do. Like, I do, but I don't miss that next day because I used to be having mad hangovers. Well, honestly, when I drink wine, I don't get like that. So I feel like maybe I can just give myself a little glass of wine like I used to. I feel like we do have to give ourselves grace. And it's so funny that you said that because I feel like we are like tethered kind of because I literally the other day I went to the liquor store by my house and I bought myself a bottle of Belle Gloss. I love that wine. I bought it the other day. I told you. I literally went and bought one the other day and that was like literally the first time in a long time that I bought liquor to have like in my house. Well, it's wine, not liquor. I mean... I mean, we're the same, but I mean, even wine, like I'd never keep wine, liquor, Mm -hmm. no type of spirits at my house. Okay. Uh, First of all, let me say that is literally my favorite wine. So if you're ever out with me or you want to send me something, Belle Gloss, a Pinot Noir, that is my, I I love it. But I will say, I have never told them why we don't keep liquor at our house anymore. Well, that's what I was going to say because you said we were so tethered because honestly, we were the type of person, we don't know how to, we don't do things with. No, me and Liz. There's no limit. It's It's no limit. The normal person will go to dinner and have a glass of wine or two. We're going to have a bottle of three or four. Yeah. Like, we don't know we how to... We take everything to the max. Like, we don't have any... We don't have self-control mm-hmm. when it comes to certain things. Yeah, we to love things to that indulge. We like. Yeah. We I overindulge. love to and indulge. And I think that's, like, the Leo part of her and the Taurus part of me. Like, we love luxury. We love nice things. Like, we love to indulge in the things that we like. Mm-hmm. So... Also, it's not only that you are like that and I'm like that, but we don't, it doesn't help when we're around each other. Right. Because we don't see a problem with it. We're it's like, get like, another bottle. <laughs> it's like, oh, you want another bottle? Let's get three. <laughs> like, Put it on the towel. Yeah, but like, we're very much those type of people. So I feel like for us to really grow in 
our business and become business women and really just take the show more seriously, we had to stop drinking. Oh, we had as to. much as we. Used but to. also now, I will say we get the smaller bottles of wine. I mean, well, we don't even keep wine at our house right. anymore. But honestly, we used to Thank film you. with the big bottles of yeah. barefoot. The big bottles of barefoot, and we used to drink the whole entire bottle. Literally. I have a question though. If you get two bottles, is that different? Yes. Because <laughs> I feel <laughs> like it is, bitch. Like, <laughs> I said, we don't get the big bottles no more. So you should have left it at that. We didn't have to tell them we get two bottles and you get one and I get one. We didn't have to go there. We supposed to look like we're growing, bro. I mean, no, we we definitely have grown. Nobody can take that away from us. <laughs> I'm very proud of us. We used to drink wine, a big bottle of wine, every day. Yeah. Every, every day. day in our 20s. Because mm. we were both in our 20s at the time. Honestly, we I used to was, drink a bottle of wine every day. I'm not even being now funny. Now me and Lex don't even drink at home. Like, yeah. only time I drink is when I come to the studio or if I decide to maybe go out with one of my friends. And that's mm. only like once a week or right. twice a week, maybe. Yeah. But I don't drink every day. And I don't even go out every week. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, for me, I, you know, I used to work at the club. Me and my friends used to literally... We would buy a bottle of Ciroc, and between the three of us, it would be gone in the night or two. First of all, why would you? Okay. Hey, when that, you know, like I said, this in the past. No more because Diddy, give us that Ciroc shit. But not only that, y'all have to realize, I don't give a fuck what y'all say about Ciroc. Ciroc used to be dropping like Jays, bro. When that peach Ciroc dropped, when that coconut dropped, like it he, was a line around the liquor store to get did, the new drop. He did used to come out with different flavors all the time. I remember, I literally vividly remember when he came out with the red berry. That's what then I'm saying. You green had the apple. pineapple. I, then you had the green apple. Bro, you had to be at the store like the club I worked at there it was, was like Summer Ciroc that came out a few but that's years what I'm ago. saying people literally used to come to the club I worked at in Houston because we always had the exclusive Ciroc oh we had it before it dropped did he used the to send thing about he used to send the owner a case so we had the all the exclusive shit so I don't give a fuck what nobody say I ain't never seen niggas wait in line for liquor like that and that's wild that he used to send the case cause y'all wasn't even supposed to be selling liquor now see, see a snitch. <laughs> it's giving snitch. I didn't say what club it was, but, if you but know, everybody know but what if, club I used to work but if you, in. But if you know licks, you know. And I only said that because the owner trash. Why would you say that? He is. He's not. He's mean. That's a good man. Not. We're not even gonna get it. The owner is a good man. You thinking about the other man? Oh, not the. You right? Yeah, the owner I'm is so, a good man. I'm so sorry to the owner of. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good man he that's is a, a good, good man, man yes. Savannah. <laughs> I'm talking about that man I, I, I was thinking about that man who used to be talking to you crazy I know he told me y'all let me I tell y'all like him let me he tell y'all a terrible person let me tell y'all a quick story one and I've never said this on the show if wait, the wait, fans wait. listening go pick him up first no listen let me get let me say this let me say this I literally, one of the things that motivated me to move to Atlanta and really do this show because that man used to talk to us. He used to talk to you so bad. No, not me. Everybody okay, in but, the club. Okay, wait, wait, let me finish I'm the story. About you, though. Right. No, no, no. I know. But what I'm saying is, it's not like he targeted me because I don't want people okay. to think that. So he used to talk to everybody so bad. Literally, he we used to go into his office at the end of the night, all of the bartenders, some of the dancers like to get paid or whatever. And he used to be like, why y'all in here? Y'all just need to be selling pussy. Like, he, that's how he would talk. Well, why are you in here? Just go sell some pussy. It's going to make your life easier. You ain't got to wait on nobody to pay you. You know, and he, I mean, when we gain weight, you're getting right. fat. You want to sell pussy, you got to lose weight. You need to sell some Give me 10%. You'll sell that pussy. I'll help you. That's how he used to talk to us. That so, man is mean. He that's was so, evil. Like, and, that's the definition of an evil person. Right. And not only that, like, when I said eventually, like, yeah, I'm moving to Atlanta. I want to get into media. Because I was already doing, like, a little bit of media stuff in Houston, but not <laughs> nothing, like, major. But I was like, yeah, I'm about to move to Houston. I mean, I'm about to move to Atlanta. I'm about to get into media. He was definitely like, why? You can just sell pussy. <laughs> You about to move all the way out laughing, y'all, but this is not <laughs> But that's not, like, not funny. He used to be like, why are you going all the way out there? Cause you're gonna be selling pussy. <laughs> you ain't gonna make it. You dust. You ain't selling no pussy in Atlanta. I, I didn't sell pussy, period. What do you mean? <laughs> you like in Atlanta? <laughs> Bitch, 
pussy. <laughs> I never sold pussy. Period. I'm so sorry. I swear to God, I didn't mean it like that, y'all. On the record, <laughs> Lex has never sold pussy. Never. And you know what's crazy? We had a friend that actually, well, not even a friend, an, asso pussy? an associate of ours. Remember when we first moved out here, we were trying to, you know, work with her on some shit. And she went back and told one of my niggas I was out here selling pussy. <laughs> Why y'all trying to put that on me and go off you? We out here hustling, trying to make ends meet the legal way. They said that pussy so fat, you should be selling it. <laughs> <laughs> They was like, yeah, you got dime, <laughs> you got them dime bags in your pants. Give it up. I said, you know what? Y'all don't understand how if many people have put that on me. you want to talk about top tier pussies, though, like the way it look, you got a top tier pussy. <laughs> That's probably why they be saying it to you. Thanks. <laughs> That's not. I'm trying to make you feel better. I don't feel better. That's damn it. wild that I'm really trying to be like that friend right now. You're not... <laughs> I'm not taking it. it. You're not taking because it. Because there's if more... If somebody was going to think you... If somebody wants to assume you sell pussy, I would think that they assuming it because you got good pussy. <laughs> and that's debatable. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's debatable. Okay. All right. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And y'all know we like to get our drink on. First of all, it's supposed to be summertime. Mm -hmm. And one thing we love in the summertime is to be out by the pool. Yes. We love us some mimosa. Mm -hmm. So why is these coming out with some mimosa hard seltzers? Yes, they have mimosa hard seltzers and they come in multiple flavors. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have strawberry orange, pineapple orange, peach orange, and pomegranate orange. And the best thing about it, being out in the sun, you get that antioxidant vitamin C. Yes, and they also come in other delicious flavors. Mm -hmm. So I used to love the blackberry lemon. All, you know, I, and I love the strawberry kiwi. All of it is so good. Mm -hmm. So it definitely passes the vibe check. So if you don't want to feel like shaking up drinks, doing whatever, it's already pre-made for you. So to yes. find out where you can purchase Vizzy, you're going to go to VizzyHardSeltzer.com backslash Poor Minds. That's VizzyHardSeltzer.com backslash Poor Minds. And also, if you want to get emails and things when they come out with new drops, you're going to go to VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash subscribe. So get your drink on. And you must be 21 and older. Period. So besides that, what have enough you been is enough. What have you been up to? This sis? is a long intro. What have you been up to so we can get into these topics? Anything Not new? Not selling pussy. All right. So for the first <laughs> topic, um, I want to talk about this because we have talked about, you know, in the past, we talked about your purpose, doing what you're supposed to do and being blessed, working hard. But I wanted to talk about, do you believe in luck? Do you believe in like being lucky? Sorry. Do you believe yeah. in like luck and being lucky? Yeah. You do? Yeah. So what is luck to you? Like the debt? Well, let, let me read a definition of luck. But in the meantime, what is luck to you? Like the definition? Um, unfortunately, I feel like in life, certain people get certain opportunities and other people don't. Mm. Like if, even if you look at heiresses and heirs, mm. that's luck. But that's luck. I mean, is you know yeah but okay but because it's like it's not something that you worked for it's not something that you necessarily grinded to deserve or to be in this position but you were born into this like you was you were born into luxury right you were okay. born into a certain lifestyle you were born into a situation where it's like your parents been having money for your your family has been having money for generations and generations so innately you know how to get money a word you know what i mean like because it's been taught to you it's been right. passed down and we talked about this on a recent episode everybody doesn't have the same opportunities right even with people love to talk about this on the show sometimes or whatever i'm gonna speak on it pretty privilege mm -hmm. people love to say oh we have pretty privilege at the end of the day people listen to poor minds because i feel like it's a good show and that's why people stay. Mm. But I would be lying if I said that first time listeners, sometimes somebody that might listen to the show for the first time ain't never looked and been like, oh, that bitch is cute. Let me, 
listen to the shit. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, okay, when they listen to it, then we have a lot to say. And it's actually a good show and it's an entertaining show. But we can't take away from the fact that it's been people who have listened just because they was like, oh, the bitch is cute. Like, right. They was scrolling through our Instagrams, looking at our pictures. Right. Or maybe seeing one of our tweets on Twitter. And that's why they listen. Okay, so the definition of luck the, sometimes. The definition of luck says success or failure apparently brought by chance rather than through one's own actions. Mm-hmm. So I'ma say right now, I don't believe in luck. I don't. You're wild. I don't. I don't believe in like when people tell me good luck. I feel like whatever is supposed to happen is already going to happen. It's already laid out like our path and what we supposed to do is already laid out. Like there's no such thing as a chance happening. I don't believe believe that. I don't believe in that because I feel like you can. Um, I think that certain things are destined to happen to us in life, but I feel like at any point when you make a decision, you make a conscious decision, you can always change your paths. But and are, nobody, are, but listen, and nobody can tell me different. Are you changing your path, or is that what was already me? Meant and you, for you just had a conversation in the bathroom. We're not talking about what we talked okay. about in the bathroom. We're not about to, us. no, but I'm saying we're not about to get deep into it. But because I'm not even going to talk about the premise of what the situation was about, mm-hmm, the conversation mm-hmm, was mm-hmm. about. But me and you just had a conversation in the bathroom about like how I kind of just been feeling some type of way just because I'm like, oh, where's my man? My man, my man. This is you. Where's my man, my (laughs) man, my man? And you were like, and you told me literally, you were like, okay, bitch, but if you want, you're talking about certain things. So if you want certain things, go back and fuck with that nigga. Go back and fuck with this person that you used to fuck with. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. But if I decided to do that, then I could get some of the things that I feel like I want right now. So I'm choosing, I'm making a decision. So it's crazy to me that you believe that like everything is destined to be a certain way. It's crazy that you don't feel like you make decisions and your life could go this way or it could go that way. You definitely can, but you making those decisions was already decided for you. Like It was not. I do feel that way. Right now, okay, I feel how I feel, but if I decide today, okay, I'm gonna go back and fuck with this nigga. That was already in your path to do that. Bro, you're nuts. I am. I am. (laughs) But, okay, wait. Can we get a vote in the room? No, I, I, no, I want to get one. Do y'all feel like everything in your life is 100% decided already? Like every decision you make, you're supposed to do that. Can I get a raise of hands? Okay. <laughs> well, no, I just... And I'm not trying to make Lex look crazy. No, I But don't, nobody raised First hand. of all, nobody can make me feel crazy about the way... You, you Oh, you did, Tahir? Oh, okay, I didn't see you. Okay, Tahir raised his hand. Well, I just feel like nobody can make me... First of all, nobody can make me feel crazy about the way I look. Because I feel like no matter... It made me feel crazy about the way I look. I mean, what I think. Yeah. Because no, ma- no matter what decision I make, like, I feel personally... It is in my path for me to be a very successful person who is an entertainer, Mm -hmm. who is a producer. I'm going to have my own production company. Like, I feel like these are all things that are in my path. I've been seeing that since I was younger. So no matter what decisions I make, I'm going to get there because that is already in my path. Nothing can stop me from reaching that point. Now, I will say this. When it comes to, like, being successful, I do feel like... But I don't even feel that way, bro. I don't. I feel like people... People work hard. It's mad people out here who could be successful. They have all of the qualities. They have all of the talent. And you know why they but don't they're make it? lazy. They are, are either, or maybe you went down a path of destruction. Do you know how many people that are homeless and on drugs that are talented people? And you know how many people that have beautiful homes that are on drugs? and successful i mean it's like what are you saying though because at the end of the day what is meant for you is for you no. and you can't do anything to okay, change but it. okay but then some of these people that you're talking about are heiresses or people that came into money and easily. some people aren't and not, some of them aren't bro i'm not about to argue with you yes, yes, but you i are. don't feel like i don't feel absolutely like, i don't feel like people that are like really really on drugs to the point that it affects them <laughs> every day are successful people i feel like you're talking about people who do drugs leisurely like these like, are people who do drugs for fun because they like oh i just want to have a good time turn this shit up a, a let, me, bump. let me do a little bump real quick <laughs> a little bump. 
Those are the Not people bump, that bump, bump. those are the people that you're referring to. But real crackheads, bitch, you want me to believe that a crackhead is successful? Hello? A crackhead has the opportunity to be successful. They do crack. They First of all, heads. you're crack shaming, and I don't like it. You're crack shaming. First of and all, I don't like everybody it. should crack shame. <laughs> Why? And that's one thing I'm okay with being a crack shamer. Crack shamer. <laughs> I'm not. Because why are you doing crack? Why not? You know why they're doing crack? <laughs> Let me tell you why they're doing crack. It was in their path to do crack. <laughs> it was, this decision was already made for you that to do crack. That was a great head. segue. <laughs> the decision was already made for you to do crack. You can't help it. You cannot turn down that pipe. You had crackhead qualities. It, it, I'm I'm not being funny. Yeah. It's okay. sometimes it's literally that's just in your Let me tell you something. So you there, like wait wait wait. So let you me like no, no, crackheads no. being a crackhead was in your past like because God planned that for you. He planned for you to be a crackhead. I'm not it's whatever people believe in the whatever. universe Universe, whoever. Yes, because we need crackheads to make the world go round. Bitch, why they be stealing from? They steal. Let me tell they you, they be why. beating people uh-uh. ass. Let me tell you why crackheads make the world go round. Crackhead strength is next level. They be beating the fuck out of people. And let me tell you why crackheads make the world go round. I'll just give you a small example on a small scale why crackheads make the world go round. Because when crack hit the streets in the eighties, you wasn't even. I, a- I, 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 I. When crack hit the street, we needed them crackheads, right? You was I, I, alive I, in the 80s, I, so how you know? Because I watched documentaries. Well, you was born in 89. Yeah, so crack was so popular, it made X person, X amount of person popular, X amount of person. We wouldn't have Big Meats right now, which would have led to 50 Cent having the BMF. We need, we would not know who Lil Meats was right now if crackheads weren't here. We I, need crackheads, bro. I, I will. I mean, we need crackheads. You heads. know what's crazy? I really kind of agree with you because it's created great television. <laughs> oh, now I'm right. The documentary, it's the domino effect. Yeah. Think like, about it. Do not that, only do we be what? interested in the people that sell the crack, but really and truly, it's people that do crack are intriguing to me. What's the What's the documentary <laughs> called with Gris, Griselda Blanco? Cocaine Cowboy. Yeah. Coca- I'm not trying to... I'm being funny, but I'm low-key not. There's little things in this earth that's why that they're here. So sometimes, you know what? <laughs> so your purpose might have been just, just to, to be, be a here crackhead. <laughs> And it was like a thousand, a hundred thousand crackheads running around Miami because they were needed to create the story of uh, getting cocaine to, to cocaine and to Pablo Escobar. That's just what your everybody has a different let me purpose add, in let life. Me, let me say Some something real quick. Wait, wait, wait. Some you, people's purpose in life is to be a Michael Jackson. Some people's purpose is to be a Whitney Houston or whatever or a Viola Davis, whatever. Some people's purpose in life is to be a crackhead. <laughs> You not everybody is meant to be great, great. But you do, but you do understand that's the difference between crack and cocaine, right? I do. I know the difference. So you're talking about cocaine cowboys. Crack and cocaine is two right, different things. But that's because they started breaking the coke down to figure out how to make more money. So once they did that, they was feeding the hood. We gotta break this shit down. How can we stretch this shit and really make some money? Because cocaine is a rich person. Drug. Okay, you're right, but crack does. The, the reason that I said this is to say crack has been much more destructive to the black community than cocaine. But we got some good stories. I'm not coming, saying that either one is okay. Right. But crack is what? Ch- the f- crack is cheap. Word to Whitney. That's but what you she said. You, you be always saying you do crack. I done did a little crack cheap? in my day. I'm cheap. <laughs> you act like you was like, I'm like, you cheap. Yes. <laughs> The fuck! I'm supposed to be offended. You know what? You if you knew what you were drinking right now, you would know how I cheap know I was. I'm drinking this cheap ass Chardonnay, <laughs> and I pick it up every day from That's the gas like, station. <laughs> that man be like, "Hey, friend," I be like, "Give me my usual," <laughs> and it better not be a dollar over ten dollars. I but want the, my usual. But the point that I was making is like. <laughs> At the end of the day, no such thing as love. Crackheads are wild. <laughs> I don't even know what we were talking about. We was talking love. about, do you believe but in I love? I just want to say this. Crackheads are wild, especially in 2022. Why are you still doing crack? And I talked it's about... It's cheaper. And I it's talked about this on Twitter. I tweeted about this. I have, like, the hold, this soft, white underbelly mm-hmm. YouTube page has on me is right. wild. So you see... So somebody retweeted me, and they were like, yeah, the prostitutes and the pimps 
That shit is crazy to me. And I'm like, bitch, I don't give a fuck about no prostitutes and no pimps. I'm from Texas. I'm, I'm from Houston. <laughs> prostitutes. <laughs> <land. laughs> it's normal to see a pimp in Kroger's. Hey, how you doing? What's up, Pimp G? <laughs> bitch, I've been, yeah. around, I've been around pimps and hoes my whole life. That ain't nothing that's intriguing to me. It's normal. It's normal. <laughs> it be the drug addicts documentaries that be mm-hmm. really intriguing me because I just be like, bro, that's so wild. And some of these people just be sounding so intelligent. And they had so much potential. How did you end up on drugs? How did you end up in this place? You could have really probably been a great person that contributed a lot to society. But guess what? But you ended up as a drug addict. And guess what? What you watch is documentaries. And how many how many views does that channel usually get? Oh, first of all, I, well, I don't know how many views it gets, but the channel itself, he I think he has like about 2.8 million subscribers. Right. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to be funny, but this is just really what I believe. Some of those people... They were meant to share their stories. Sometimes you're sent here <clears throat> some t- to do things that are going to teach other people lessons. And that just is what it is. Like, not everybody is meant to, like I said, be the president of the United States or mm. be, um, what was that man's name that was flying the plane in the Hudson and it crashed in the Hudson and he saved everybody. Not everybody is meant to be the hero. Sometimes your purpose is to maybe go on a YouTube channel and tell a story and maybe you saved Maybe you saved a hundred lives of people that are on the edge and they wanted to go do, do drugs mm-hmm. that night. And even though your story may have ended right there, because I've seen those documentaries before, and there well, was actually I don't a girl think they saving lives because they still be in the streets. No, it's I'm not, not like they no, be no, no, saved. No, I'm not talking about their life personally. I'm saying you never know who they touch. Okay, just yeah. like us. I literally got a DM from a girl the other day that was saying like, "I'm in bed, sick. I'm in the hospital, and I was just on the verge of giving up." And I was literally watching poor minds laughing. Mm. So so sometimes your purpose is just to give somebody that extra push because maybe that person is going to go on and do something greater. Mm-hmm. But that was your purpose to keep that person going. Like I said, honestly, everybody's path is not meant to be this and this, but they're meant to make that domino effect. Okay, so going back to do you believe in love? No. I, because I don't know how we even start talking about crackheads <laughs> this is a wild we show need all, at the, end of the, day, um, the title is we need crackheads <laughs> Tahir please remember to send that in the email we need crack when it's time we need we need crack we need crack we do okay you can't convince me otherwise right. so yes I do believe in luck I feel like some people are lucky um me and Ryan had a conversation me you Ryan and Chad we went mm-hmm. out to eat mm-hmm not that long ago and me and Ryan were having a conversation and Ryan was just like one thing that I really like about you is I feel like you know you're resilient he was like you've been why are you doing this you are so irritating why are you making these faces crack I be trying to have y'all don't understand even in real life I try to have conversations with Lex and she make the weirdest faces all the time and I just be like bro it just take me out of the Mm -hmm. mindset of what I'm trying to talk about anyways Ryan was just like I feel like you're really resilient like your life as a whole like your life story from how you was born to the things you've accomplished to where you're at right now he was like most people that end up in situations like you were in as far as like you know their mom having them at 12 13 and then being adopted and just the whole situation they end up being like living in trailers they Mm -hmm. end up being people that don't contribute anything to the world so the fact that you've been able to accomplish all of the things that you've accomplished that shit is really amazing and sometimes i think as a person i don't really sit and think about that type of stuff about myself i just be like okay whatever i mean this is my story like Mm. this is my life story and at the end of the day I was thinking of, here's my <laughs> ghetto story. I can focus. I'm sorry. It rice and honey. Didn't it but that do me? my my honey. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I don't think, I don't sit and really think about myself in that way. Right, because right. I think us as people, it's like, this is my life. Mm-hmm. I, I've, I'm living it. I've been living it. I don't think it's like this great story. You know, but do you I think mean? you're, you think you're lucky? Yeah, 
I do. Especially after having that conversation with him. Prior to, even prior to that though, just things that have happened in my life. Yeah, I do. I think that some things happen to me. It's just kind of luck. It's not luck. I think I have good luck. I don't. I just think you were just meant to do this. It was me. You think I was meant to get, okay, like. Yes. Not trying to be funny. We talked about this on an episode about a year ago when I got this watch. You think I was just meant to get a watch from somebody and I never had sex with them. They gave me a watch on like the second time we encountered each other, a Rolex, a $10,000 watch. Yeah. You don't think, so you don't think it's no type of luck involved in that. Bitches be out here fucking for rent money. You just be out here fucking for five hundred dollars. Sounds unlucky. A hundred dollars. <laughs> sounds unlucky. That's what I'm saying. Well, it no, no, sounds no. unlucky. No, but what I, I I don't believe that was luck. You know why? Because that contributed to us having a good episode and laughing and talking about that shit. Because things are just meant to happen for you. That's just what you're meant to have. The things that come in. I don't believe in luck. I don't. I believe that whatever you get, it's either like a blessing or it was just supposed to be in your path. I don't care if it's a Cheeto and you a hungry homeless man. You are not lucky. You just came across that Cheeto because you were meant to come across that Cheeto for a reason. Everything is for okay, a so reason. You don't, but you're not, you gotta listen to what you're saying, bro. You don't think that that sounds like contradictory to a certain extent because... Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, you're saying, okay, this person was meant to get a Cheeto. Why wasn't the other person that's on the corner with them meant to get one? Because it wasn't in it's, their path. Not so lucky, luck. are you? Okay, exactly. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't believe in luck. So let's move on. You we'll sound, agree. You sound crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's move on. Let's move on. Because we got a lot to talk about. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And we are here to tell y'all about Etsy.com. We love Etsy because you can get so many beautifully made custom things from there. Like, I feel like even with your nose ring right Ooh, now. I love a little Etsy, hun. I feel like mm-hmm. if you like things that are custom to you, whether it's home decor, you know, accessories, home and living, games, whatever you need, Etsy has got it for you. And we know if you listen to this podcast, you are everything but boring, hun. Definitely custom. Made. Very much custom made. Mm-hmm. So make sure that you go to Etsy.com and you put the code Welcome 10 and you'll get 10% off of your first purchase. Mm-hmm. Maximum offer value of $50. So you don't go too crazy, but you still gonna get that 10% off. Mm-hmm. So if you're new to Etsy, never used it before, go to Etsy.com and use code Welcome 10. Hey, get you some cute stuff, honey. Mm-hmm. today okay Okay, so we are going to talk about if a man hasn't challenged you to step up as a woman you've never had a real man in your life now i struggle with this because i feel like i'm a good woman how was them safety pins holding your titties up they're made of titanium (laughs) i got this from the marvel universe titanium vibranium shout out to t'challa <laughs> that's why i say vibranium bitch we gonna speak he gonna he sent it to me personally mm-hmm. how don't go there <laughs> don't fucking go there that right i wasn't i was just asking okay how. so anyways we're gonna get into that because i feel like do i feel like i'm a good woman yes do i feel like i'm an amazing woman yes like why you feel like you a good woman because i am i feel why? like um I just feel like what I bring to the table as a, fr- I feel like I'm a good friend. First of all, you I are. do. You're I feel like man. I bring logic to a lot of situations. I bring a lot of peace to a lot of situations. Um, you're not logical. Um, no, I, I haven't been in the past, but I can honestly say for the past year, the decisions that I've made and how I'm moving. No, Lex a year ago, two years ago was not logical. Honestly, Lex in this past year, I have been logical i haven't jumped like the lex that showed up at Paw Paw door beating on the door trying to- you are my that's why that's in y'all that's the only reason why i say lex is not logical just because i mean she's my best friend i know her right she is a person that moves off of um like if she got to choose between emotion and logic it's Emotion. Emotion. But like I said, in the past year, Uh I'm not even being funny. Since I started therapy, I've grown out of that. That's why a lot of times when I'm going through things, I don't dump on people. I don't go and act. I sit in myself and I'm like, okay, is this what you want to do? How do you want to react? 
So I feel okay, like so going back to you being a good one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like I've grown. I've learned how to communicate better. Um, I just feel like I bring peace to situations. I can create, like I curate good You're vibes. You're very for, peaceful. I, You're very peaceful. I am peaceful, and I feel like I create a good vibe. I feel like at the end of the day, people just want to feel good, and. I, I do that. You I do. make people feel fucking good. That's one thing I can say about myself. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I do feel like I'm a good woman. Outside of me being a a boss, a and business I wasn't woman, because I don't feel no, like I know. you are. I just wanted to know. Yeah, why that's you what I'm saying. Way. So yeah, I feel like um, I'm a good partner. I've been a good partner to people before. So <clears throat> um, do I feel like a man hasn't challenged me to step up as a woman? No. Maybe I haven't had a real man, but I feel like the woman I am, I don't credit a man for this i credit myself for this and my growth personally i feel like you can't be a good partner until you've grown personally you can't have a man or even as a man you can't have a woman teach you how to be a man you have to just grow on your own so that's why i don't because there was like a little tweet going around saying if a man hasn't challenged you or step you haven't stepped up as a woman and you haven't had a good man it's like mm, i don't believe that because to become complete i believe it you believe it so you feel like you haven't met you haven't made full circle as a woman no yet. no absolutely not i mean i'm 30 mm-hmm. we just talked about these because you like you've said about me i feel like i am very much one of those people where it's like it has to be a timeline everything gotta happen by a certain time mm-hmm. and because of that i feel like i limit myself right but however in the grand scheme of things i'm still very young and I don't feel like I've reached my full potential. Right. Not necessarily because it has to do with a man, but I don't feel like I've ever had a man that really challenged me. But that's what I'm saying. We're talking about if it had... So do you feel like you haven't reached your full potential because you haven't had a good man yet? That's what we're speaking on. Do you feel like... Yeah. Because I feel like as with when it comes to partners, mm. a partner... <laughs> With you and another person, y'all create like y'all are like one mm-hmm. right. Y- y'all are one entity. One band. One sound. Right. Y'all are one entity. It's a whole. Right. You know what I mean? And that's why I think we always, especially now, because I think of things we said in the past, we're so adamant about letting people know, no, we're not advocates for being independent. Me and Lex don't want to be independent. So like, don't. We, we are. I don't know so what we, the fuck Webby was talking about. I don't want that shit. I-N-Z-E-P-E-E-N-D-E. She got her own house. Drive her own with Range Rover all white. Like a tall sips. It is. <laughs> but it, <laughs> it is I mean when lyrics be real life is wild so what what I was saying, I don't even remember I'm, I'm just let that's why I'm let oh, go ahead you got it Miss Mama Miss I'm not a complete cause I ain't had a man okay no but what I was saying is me and Lex don't want to be independent like that's not what we want however we are so that's why I feel like we try to let y'all know like yeah get your own money get your bag do what you need to do but I very much want a man right and I feel like when I find the right person it's going to like yeah you need to be complete by yourself and that's what I'm saying but it's gonna add but it's gonna add to me it's nothing like having a great person around you even with me and you being friends I feel like you're a great person <laughs> why did you do that cause I was happy <laughs> But you're coming out to make faces. I feel like you're a great person <laughs> and us being friends has like helped me as a person in so many ways right and I feel like I tell you that all the time. And I feel like vice versa. I mm-hmm. mean, I ain't put, trying to put no words in your mouth. But I mean, you've told me this before. Drea has helped me become a great person. And I love her so much. She means the world to me. And I have grown. I'm just kidding. No, I, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But no, I definitely agree. So I feel like if people look, can help. Like people really help you in your life yeah, in so absolutely. many different ways. Um, and help you grow in ways that you didn't even know. Like it's certain shit that you don't even be knowing is wrong with you sometimes until you meet the right mm. person and you be like damn I'm really fucked up in this certain aspect so I feel like a good man can come and change your life like I guess for I real. just have to experience it because I do feel like I've became a- but you haven't experienced it and that's why probably you feel that way and neither have I but I have hope and I have optimism for the possibility that it will happen well I just feel like as a woman like 
where I am right now, do I feel like I'm 100%? No, because I do feel like I have more growing to do, but that's something that I need to do on my own. I don't feel like a woman, a man, anybody can do that for me. But I feel like when I am 100% woman, the things that a man is going to bring to the table for me or bring to me is going to be just icing do on you the cake. Feel, do you feel like you've ever been in a situation where a man has challenged you? Um, I do. Okay. And so you feel like you've had a man. Not Shantae's got a bed in their home. No, I've had a person that I deal with. I mean, I have a, and I still deal with him, but I feel like... That's what we're going to name the episode. Sh- XP got a man in their home. And don't. <laughs> but I kind of do. <laughs> love you, boo. I'm just playing. No, Freaky but I... Petey love you, too. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will say, do I have... I, there is somebody um, that I've dealt with for a long... I'm going to stop saying his name on the show because I just... Just don't say who the person right. is, but just... Um, but he has challenged me mentally. I feel like I start looking at things in other ways. Even the episode that we did the other week with um, the Wall Street Trap dude, when he mentioned Chris Johnson, I knew who he was because he was like, oh, this is somebody you need to follow. Mm-hmm. Like, I learned a lot from him outside of us being romantically involved. You know what I'm saying? So, I do have people that I necessarily learn from, but does that make me feel like I'm more of a woman? And No, I just feel like this is a situation where it's like, okay, cool. Like we can grow with each other. I'm in a space now to where I can match your money. Mm -hmm. We're in a space now to where it used to be. It was him and it was me right here. I was on level one and he was on like level seven, eight. Now, bitch, we both at eight. So Mm -hmm. now our conversations can match because he was like, oh, this is what you. I mean, I've brought a lot of ideas to the table from guys that I've dated. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like deals that we're making right now because a guy I was dating gave me the idea. So I feel like, yeah, so I feel like, yeah, I learn from men that I date all the time, but do I feel like it makes me more, um, does it make me more of a woman or challenge me? Um, I can say, yeah. I'm not saying it makes you a woman, but it changes you. Yeah, I can say, yeah, men have definitely changed me. anybody that can come into my life and change me, that is somebody who has made impact. Mm. Everybody that that I've came across don't okay. make an impact in my life. Okay. It's certain people that I've met in my life. It's even people that I was literally cool with, friends with for years, men that I dated for years. And it's like now when I think about them, they really a distant memory. Right. Because you didn't. You don't remember nothing. You weren't impactful. Mm. Like you didn't do anything okay, to that makes sense. make me remember you. Like, of course, I mean, I spent a certain amount of time with you. So, of course, I remember that time period. Right. I remember okay. the fact that I fucked with you. So maybe. But you were not impactful in my life it's a handful of people bitch honestly I can count on one hand the amount of people that I feel like have been impactful for me and so I think that that's why as people we have to start shifting our mindset shifting our narrative and being more intentional about Mm. the people we keep around us because if I'm not if you're around me all the time and you're not making a difference in my life why are you around right why are you around? Well, Everybody around me, I feel like, makes a difference in my life. Even going down to the people in this room. I know that's right. You're going to have an impact out here. <laughs> but I'm just saying, <laughs> everybody around me has a purpose, right. in my opinion. Right. You know what I mean? Without you, I couldn't be doing this. Without mm-hmm. you, I couldn't be here. I couldn't be doing these things. Everybody has a purpose. They're impactful. If you got people around you and you got a question and ask yourself, like, whoa, whoa. And and we hate to say this, but what do you bring, bring to, to the, the table? table. <laughs> what do you bring to the table? What are you doing? You don't need to be around me. Well, you know what? If I can't think of like, just, a solid reason, you just, why? You just taught me something. Because you know what? Okay. Let me retract my statement. Because now that I'm thinking about the situation, I will feel like maybe he did teach me to be a, a more of a woman. Yeah. Because now I think about it like whenever like he walks in his house, I want him to feel a certain vibe. Okay. But that was because that's what, like, he told me, like, why this ain't, why this ain't. And it wasn't like he was being rude, but it's just like, I, I know I'm about to ruffle some feathers. They're like, that's not what makes a woman. But that's what made me feel like, okay, mm-hmm. let me step it up for this man because I care about him and I love him. But I also was teaching him, like, okay, if I'm doing this for you, then you need to do that for me. So, you know what? Maybe you are right. And that's fine, too, if you want to change something about yourself or you want to do certain things because you with a certain person. Even if it doesn't work out with that person, right. it's still a good quality that might end up helping you in the long run with your next person. Facts. With the person you're supposed to be with. It might be a quality that you needed to learn to be a good partner to somebody else. That's why Beyonce was so mad and ring the alarm. 
She was like, I've, I've <laughs> made you into. I'll be damned if I see another chick on his arm. That's what I'm saying because she felt I like she loved this me. man. I feel that shit to this day because that's how I be feeling about my old nigga. Imagine you molding a man. Well, I didn't him. mold him, but I definitely be like, I be. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this gla- this cut, table glass. Cut, cut, I'm sorry. Cut, I'm so let me know how y'all feel. Do y'all feel like um, if you haven't stepped it up as a woman completely or as a man, if you haven't stepped it up as a man completely, do you feel like it's because you haven't had a good woman or anybody out there for like, you know, other sexualities because you haven't had a good partner that makes you, you know, step it up to the plate? I'm so sorry. So, man. I didn't even let you say what you had to say. What was, why did you bring up the Beyonce reference? Because that's what she was saying and ring the alarm. She was saying like... I be damned if I build this nigga up and he go give it to another bitch. So yeah. I feel like that's a lot of fear in a lot of women. Like, I'm not going to lie. Well, that's how you avoid that by, you know what, not build it up a nigga. I want a nigga that's already built. But no, but it, but no, it ain't even about that. For I'm example. I'm not Dre the builder. No, but not. That's o- not what it's giving. But not only that, like, for example, a guy I was dating, he didn't know how to dress. I took him to the mall and I picked out an outfit. I didn't buy it. He bought it. But I dressed him. Ew. I dressed him and I was like, like showing him it was the same dude that I bought the cologne for. I dressed him and, and guess what happened? You he don't had, fuck with him no more. Not only that, but he wore the val- <laughs> he wore the outfit I bought him on his Valentine's Day date. <laughs> that's why if you can't dress, and that's why I be telling you hoes, do not buy, do not be spending money on these. I, did, I said I didn't buy the outfit. Until I dress your nigga. Once he your nigga, like if that's your man and y'all have like, okay, yeah, we in a relationship. Cool, spend whatever you want on the nigga. I didn't. But, I didn't buy the outfit, but I picked the outfit. I dressed him. And but he, let me. And then mm. he, but let me say this. That's her. It wasn't no, it wasn't her because let me say this. The reason he was on the Valentine's Day date with her because no, I walked away I'm and I chose myself cry. because he was playing. But anyways, like I'm cry. saying I'm is that exactly no tears. No, I'm not gonna cry. cry. The notes. <laughs> but I will say this: the reason I wasn't tripping like that is because well, I was tripping a little bit because like the only reason you fly as fuck right now, first of all. Cause you do Rep- not be putting repeat, that shit on. Repeat offender because you were <laughs> posted in the pic in the outfit. That's why you didn't post it on your Instagram. But repeat offender because you already had that outfit on, and I picked out the outfit for you. But either way it goes, I'm not hurt. I'm not bitter about it. But I'm not doing that no more. I you should have never been doing it. I know, but I was trying to be a good. I was trying to. But that's what I'm saying. I'm not. I feel like that's when the pick me side of you be coming in. But I'm not. Like I, I said, feel like we both have pick me qualities. Everybody at has times. pick me qualities yeah. when you like somebody. Yeah. When you like somebody, it's not about being a pick me. You're just doing because you like I think this person. Absolutely, everybody I, has pick me qualities. At I didn't time. pick out, out his outfit to get picked. I picked out his outfit because I wanted him to look nice, and he was going to an event, and I cared. I didn't care about him picking me. Mm-hmm. I just cared about him. But like I said, as far as me challenging a, a man to be a man, there are things that, there are criteria that you already need to meet. I got all the background. Just be a man. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like if you don't, there are certain criteria that need to be met. There are basic you things to me of being a man. Of me, if you don't know how to dress, wear cologne, a have a clean house, your house isn't decorated nice, those are things to me that those should I already be checked off before be. I come to the picture. Now, other Just things like we talked about the other week, like emotional body. intelligence, things like that, like, like, we can grow and learn that together. Calling but other open. things, I feel like we going to have to... If you don't right have that, now. I'm not doing Just it. Just be a man. All right, bitch. Let's move on. Because you won't <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> I felt like you was going on a tangent, bitch. You needed some background vocals. I didn't know what to say. I was just let... <laughs> at that point, I just had to let you talk. I had to let you talk, but then I did not want to not I be a part. I couldn't hear myself. I didn't. I wanted to let you talk, but I did not want to not be a part of the show. <laughs> so I had to give you some background Girl, vocals. Girl, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hurt. I'm hurt. And I'm hurt. And so was Tony. That's why I felt like that was. <laughs> we ain't never going to make it through this goddamn episode. That's why I felt like that was the perfect background vocal. Right. So basically, uh, fuck these we niggas. We need to get Tony on the show. That is a bad bitch. Or Tamar. Because Tamar can blow too. Bitch, Both I don't give them. a fuck any of the Braxton's. <laughs> Call up. <laughs> Call up Trina. Tawanda. Call up Trina and Tawanda, bitch. We. <laughs> Girl, get the fuck out of here! 
What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And y'all know we love us some Hello Fresh. It's about to be summertime, so it's time to get in shape, lose that weight. Yeah, absolutely. And what makes it so easy is that you do not have to go to the grocery store. They will literally deliver it right to your door, pre-portioned ingredients. You don't even have to do any of the guesswork when it comes to cooking. All you got to do is pull out that skillet and cookie. Right. So HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from. So whether you're a vegetarian, you're watching your calories, you want gourmet options, HelloFresh has so many things to offer. And it's also 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. Mm -hmm. So you know, I've really been trying to eat healthy lately. So I have been eating and I cooked for you this past week. The silky Sicilian penne and chicken. And even though I shouldn't be eating pasta, HelloFresh portions it out so easily to where it's like the perfect portion for me to where I'm not eating too many calories, even though it's pasta. Hey, man, sister. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to (laughs) HelloFresh.com slash PoorMind16 and use code PoorMind16 for up to 16 free meals Mm -hmm. and three free gifts. So if you're trying to get your body right, y'all, please use HelloFresh. It's amazing. As you can see, it's worth wonders. You see the material. Okay, so now we go. Oh, fuck, no. We can't do this. What was the other one name? Because that's what she always get mad about. What? We didn't even say your name. It's Tawanda, Trina, Tony, Tamar, and <laughs> Tristan. <laughs> No, she gonna cuss us out if she ever see this episode. Cause she be, bro, what's that lady name? Terry. Tracy. Tracy. And you know what? Tra- and Tracy, you could come on the show too. No, I love, it is crazy because I really do like Tracy. I like her too. I like all of the She the one that be dancing her ass off too. Breakfast. All right. <laughs> so now we gonna get into the bed. Oh, bow, 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 bow. Who are you? <laughs> Because you've been doing this. All- I don't know. Wait till we get off. <laughs> Not you was about to waste wine on the iPad and you was going to have to buy a new one. Bye. Get out of your budget. <laughs> Give me the company card. <laughs> okay, so today, I cannot believe we haven't talked about this topic yet because mm-hmm. it is so common with sex. It is very important in sex. And it's something that I pay attention to so much. I want to talk about the aftercare after sex. Mm-hmm. So after we get done, you know, making the wheat, the wheat love, I'm judging you on what you do afterwards. Do you bring me a towel? Do you go take a shower? Do you make sure I'm good? Do you ask me if I need a water? Like, these are things that women pay attention to, whether y'all know it or not. So what do you expect in the aftercare? I expect you to change your sheets. Okay, so you expect the man to wash his sheets. Absolutely. If we have sex and then you don't want to change your sheets, are you saying you're a squirter? What I will say is because I'm saying that's why you would need it if you. What I will say, what I will say is, and we've said this before on the show. If you ain't a squirter, that's your granny fault. So I'm gonna just leave it at that. (laughs) Leave Loretta out of this. I would just say Laura, because that was my granny (laughs) name. You know, she did what needed to be done. Uh, so you are a squirter. You're disgusting. All I'm saying... You are disgusting. I don't like the energy right <laughs> I'm now. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Because you're definitely a squirter too. <laughs> I'm a lady. I don't... I am not a squirter. I'm a lady. <laughs> a lady and a squirter. Or <laughs> not the lady and the squirter. <laughs> we We're not naming this the lady and the squirter. We're not. So get over it and let that shit go. So besides changing the sheets... What do you expect a man to do? Take a take a shower. Take a shower. What if we off that here though? Okay, so I'll say You're this. Strict. I'll say this. If we are like crazy drunk, because at times it means drunk be- and loud. <laughs> We love Beyonce now. We show, we literally reference her. We're not gonna talk to you. She would never talk to us. <laughs> she never. Would she would never talk to us. <laughs> but she might tell us happy birthday one year because you know she be true, telling people happy birthday. True. True. So. I just feel like... He should take a shower. He needs to take a shower. Wash the sheets. I... Yes. 
if we have sex and we're not d- crazy drunk, why did you not take a shot? Like, why are you not meeting me in the shower? Or why are you not trying to hop in right after me? I don't like that. Okay, I'll say this. I don't like that. That's... It ain't giving BDB. Mm, okay. It's okay. not giving the BDB energy. Is there anything else you expect on aftercare? A shower, change the sheets, bring me a towel. Okay. I like that. Like That's a good list. That's a good list. Um, not, <laughs> my list is after we're immediately done, especially like if you have ejaculated on my um a body. You I hate when a man goes to the bathroom. Not on your torso. You know, sometimes things happen. So I feel like if you go to the bathroom and wipe yourself off and then you don't bring me a towel, a warm towel, don't just you know, and don't give me the towel that you just used too. Like, I don't want that. Like, you need to give me a fresh mm. towel that's warm and give it to me. So if I'm laying there with your children on my torso, you need to bring me a fresh, warm towel. So that's, that's to me is the first thing. Like, cause that shows like a little, and honestly, I don't want it you. It shows you care. It shows me care. And I don't want you to throw it on me. You need to do it. Cause he already threw it on you. See, this is, we're trying mm verbiage thought about what you said did he not (laughs) did he not (laughs) did he not not ejaculate on your torso that's how we need to talk to make it sound (laughs) he did he did (laughs) so I will say I just feel like okay get a warm towel like that should be the first steps and honestly I don't want anything to be done in that moment I want you to come and get in the bed and we can cuddle for a, a little moment. I, li- I like to sit in the moments of like, damn, we nasty. Did we just really do that? So, yeah, I do want you to wash your sheets. <sighs> Leg. Take a shower. But in the moment, yes, wipe us down. But let's lay in the bed in the moment and cuddle. Not because I'm on. <laughs> wipe my down. <laughs> uh, wipe my down. I need, but I need 20. <laughs> Bro, Loki, I hate to say this because I feel like bitches on Instagram always be like, hey, I'm so goofy. We really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. The niggas, the, the proof, if is, we in make the, it through the this proof ep- is in the oat milk pudding. If we can make it through this we episode. Don't do, we don't do, because we don't do dairy. <laughs> if I can make it through this episode, I promise I'm going to go to church every Sunday. <laughs> Let me not make that promise. Oh. Yeah. But anyway, when they song come on. Yeah, I do feel like wipe me down. But in the moment, like my aftercare after sex is cuddling. I like to cuddle after sex. I do. I knew what you was reaching for. No, I was reaching for for you. Mm. But yeah, so aftercare after sex, I feel like a little cuddle. I'm not going li- <laughs> to <laughs> my bad y'all it's a little but no i do feel like no no i'm good but i do feel like um we can take a shower in the morning i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not too pressed about the shower i'm not no i'm not gonna lie i am i have to take like that's the part of me that i feel like it's kind of ocd yeah i mean and that's fine i have to take a shower after six and i have to pee well no you got to pee that's a given. I have to be both, and I both have to parties. Take- both parties, y'all have to urinate yeah. after sex. But like I said, the aftercare for me, more so, wipe me off, ask me if I need a water, and cuddle with me. Those are my three aftercare things after sex mm-hmm. for me personally. So let us know what are y'all aftercare after sex, and you know, because honestly, that's a lot of make or break for me personally. Like if you don't do those things, I kind of look at you like, mm, that's a part of the. The process with sex. All I right. Agree. So now we gonna get into the bop. Hey, the bop. Hey, bow, bow, I bow, bow, bow. I'm just singing by myself today. I was locking it what up. Is, oh, I was like, what is that? I was locking it up. You did good. Okay, Thank so you. my bop of the week is actually I saw her on a blog. I can't remember what the blog was, but her name is uh, Naja Charles. She's actually a really, really dope songwriter. If you Google her, obviously I've been drinking, so I can't think of all the songs that she's mm. wrote right now. I am. I'm a little tipsy. But she is super, super dope, and she has a pen like no other. Like, she's literally wrote some of your favorite songs. So, she dropped the EP, and it's really good, because a lot of times you see songwriters that are so dope, but they can't write their own songs. Mm -hmm. So, that's one thing I like about, like, you know, Money Long. Like, she was a songwriter for so long. Why I thought that lady name was Mooney? Uh, Maybe it is Mooney. No, it is. It's Money. It's Money. Money. Oh, okay. But I think because of the spelling. I 
always with, thought it was money. I thought it was Mooney. Okay. Well, um, Naja Charles, she's a songwriter. She's very well known in the industry. Like, she's the go-to girl. And she dropped the EP, and it was really good. And she has this song called Beautiful Lies. And she's just really dope. And I really want to root for the creators behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. She wrote the song with Usher and Summer Walker. You made me want to come through. Gonna have to just to put it down on you. And like she's young, girl. And like, that's it's still about. Uh, yeah, it's a bop. So, uh, Naja Charles, beautiful lies. I, I love Summer it. Walker. Mm-hmm. Hey, sis, come on the show. Um. So my vibe of the week is Future has a new song called Worst Day. Oh, brother. I like it. No, it's a good song, but we know why that was his worst day. He said it because he got a buy. He said Valentine's Day was the worst day because he got to buy so many bitches things. One thing about Future, that man never disappoint me. First of all, when it comes to the the music, mm. <laughs> that, okay. that's all, bitch. That's all I'm talking about. Oh. The music. Oh, when it comes to the music, Future never disappoints. Mm. Like that is like Kanye gonna probably cuss us out when this show become big. Us. I ain't say nothing. Say what you Kanye, have to well, say. Well, Kanye probably gonna cuss me out when this show become big because a creative genius, if, if you will, maybe even on the level of Kanye. It's future is. I can agree with that a though. Creative genius. You can't say just like because Kanye's art is a little different from future. I mean yeah it's so, different right. it's different but I fuck with Kanye too I mean I think I've said this before on the show I love Kanye like my Dark Twisted Fantasy my favorite Kanye album hands down mm. but I'm also familiar with the graduation mm. and you know what I mean college dropout honestly but at the end of the day future the catalog let's talk about the catalog immaculate <gasps> What's the song that always reminds you of me? I God, ain't got no manners for no slut. <laughs> I'ma put my thumb in her butt, drive me like ah. Mm-hmm. He got that thumb in my butt. But the fact that's your and, song. And, and not only is that like Lex song that she think when she think of me, but my other friends, it's always a future song. Mm-hmm. Future is the greatest. The greatest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When it in his personal life. But that, I mean, no, I'm but, that my, but that ain't but that ain't my business though. I but know, in but rap, Future is. I, I'm not he's saying he's the top, greatest rapper. No, but, you, but he's, he's in your top five. I can agree. He can be in your he's top. He's in my five. top ten. Okay, I can agree with that. That's cool. No, I fuck with Future. Future definitely. He he never fails to make a hit. I'll say that. I fuck with Future. You know, I was on the first Dirty Sprite. Easter P. Gucci bucket hats for all my heathens. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was on the first. He be saying a word. The first Dirty Sprite. Like, before. So, I get it. I love the genius of Future. So, I can mm-hmm. agree with that. It ain't it ain't no bad blood. How okay. about the So, oh, not, not the government. Okay, so now we're going to do the show breakdown. So many of y'all have sent this show to us. Ooh. And y'all wanted us to talk about this show. Um, We're going to talk about the tender swindler bless you sorry bless you yes so um the tender swindler is basically a show on um netflix so we're gonna do a quick breakdown of the show because it's really self-explanatory basically a guy his name is simon he was on twitter swindling women what he did was he pretended to be a billionaire and when they went to his Tinder profile, he had everything laid out. The jets, the nice dinners, the designer, everything like he looked like a BDB. And then, you know, when you have a Tinder account, it connects to your Instagram. You go to his Instagram, same thing. The jets, the the food, the clothes, everything. So basically, what he was doing was he was scamming women and he was using the money from one woman to pay for things for the next woman. So he wasn't scheme. even so he was a Ponzi scheme. Uh, so right. he wasn't even living this life for real. You know what I mean? Like he would use one bitch to get the next bitch. And the whole situation is just wild to me because at the end of the day, um, I'm very empathetic for those women. Right. So wait, 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 before you get into okay. that. The angle that we want to talk about it today, because I don't want to victim shame, but today we're yeah. victim shaming. Yeah, for sure. We're victim shaming today. Because if, if you don't like to, wait, wait, if you don't like to victim shame, turn this shit off right now. 
Because we victim shaming today. Because in the words of day day, you dead broke. That's your daddy fault. Like, if your daddy is a millionaire. A bi- then, no, no, no. A, a, a billionaire. billionaire. If your daddy is a billionaire and you feel like your life is in danger and you need money to get from point A to point my B. My enemies. Why couldn't you? My enemies. That's what he called them. My enemies. Yeah. So, <laughs> if... <laughs> So if you if your life is in danger and you need this money, I need this money, <laughs> right? If you need this money, then why can't your daddy give it to you? And not only that, let me say this: I've never dealt with a billionaire. I've dealt with millionaires, of course. People, well, bitch, they didn't ever deal with a billionaire, right? But either. what I'm saying is, this is honestly for women out there. If you're looking for a BDB, if you, I saw somebody on Twitter get swindled today from a man, like. Let me tell y'all something. A man with money is never going to ask you for money. Especially, imagine a billionaire. This man was saying he was a billionaire. Imagine a billionaire asking you for money. He swindled one woman out of $250,000. Th- these women were opening up credit cards. There was some. There was one woman who, who was in debt like a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. They were opening Amex cards. Let me tell you something. Straight out the gate, Simon would have been done with me. I can't even get approved for no Amex. He was like, "Get get your ass out of here," because I couldn't get it. I'm like, "Baby, I got three dollars. What you need?" I got three dollars and myself. We can squelp up with your enemies. At That's the all end I got. Of the these day, hands. That's all. All I'm saying is. Why you ever even a nigga money? That's why we go back to why stop giving these men money. Stop giving these men, especially a man who's on private jets. He's taking you to dinners. He was taking women to dinners that cost $20,000. Let me tell y'all, this one lady that was talking on the show, she was such in debt. He called her one time talking about my bodyguard got beat up. They're after me. Can you please send me money? She sent him like 50 grand in one night. Y'all, he was in Greece. Tahir, like, I'm in the wrong profession. (laughs) He was in Greece with some bitches. And let me tell y'all, if y'all watch the documentary, you notice there's one girl who didn't talk on the show. So during all this time, he was dating a model. Yeah. She never got swindled because she was there for a good time. Be there it's, for a good time. It's giving me. She was there for a good time. I would have never got that nigga She was money. never on the documentary, never said he got anything out of her because he was the one, he was taking her on the trips. He was feeding her. He was taking all these money from these other women. Let me tell y'all, women's men will pray, not all men, but those type of men will pray on your weakness. Why would you give a billionaire um, money? They'll prey on your weakness, but I also feel like, again, no, you don't want to talk about this, and we just kind of talked about this earlier. But it's about luck. Um, I feel like the women that were saying that they got swindled, they don't they didn't look like the model that he was messing with. Okay. So that's why she didn't get swindled because she looked a certain way. She's lucky. Like you look a certain way. This nigga just want to be around you. He just wants your presence. So yeah, of course, he's not gonna try to swindle you. He's not gonna try to get money out of you because bitch, he happy to have you around. These other- that's, that's your opinion though. Okay, friend. It was. Okay. You didn't find her attractive. Who? But you did. Obviously not, because you're saying that she got swindled because she didn't look like the model. Well, it was three of them. Right. I don't not find them attractive. I don't think any of them are ugly, but they did they didn't look like the model. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Start with straight okay. shots and then pop models. <laughs> Chill with the hood rats, then pop models. But honestly, like, this is what we he but, don't like it it wasn't it's it wasn't giving the model aesthetic. Like cause they showed what the girl looked like it it wasn't giving that when it came to those three women who got swindled out of their money but even if you don't look like the model even if you don't look like the I'm model i'm not saying no, you no, got no. to but we i'm, I'm not saying for you thing for, no i'm not thing. saying that you said Y'all, that please please take the things i say with a grain of salt because i don't be trying to be insensitive but i just be trying to be real no i'm like, like these saying. bitches got swindled because at the end of the day they would have never been able to be on a private jet they would have never been able to live this type of lifestyle that's why he was able to swindle them i can agree a bitch who can get that shit gonna get that shit who done been exposed to that shit she gonna be like nigga you need twenty thousand dollars fuck that i'm gonna go fuck with my other nigga who be on jet right so like all i was about to say was even if you don't look like the model i don't care if a man asks you for anything don't give it to him because there's more where that came from it is there's there's more where that came from i ain't never had him i swear i have never had a man ask me for money besides when i was like 
in my early, early 20s, like super young. But like now I don't even deal with men like that. So it's like maybe that is what it is because you ain't never experienced this type of lifestyle. And I'm not saying that we have. And I've been on a private jet one time. To be honest with you, one time. So I'm not gonna sit here and act like I be on private. But it don't jets all matter. The There's still something that you've done before, though. But I'm just saying, if a man that says that he has all this and that, if you are a not only if you're a millionaire, but if you are a billionaire, there should at least be a hundred people you ask for for money before you even get to me. Why am I the first person you call? But that's what made these, em- but that's what made these women feel special. And I'm empathetic because it's like I'm not. you. Well, I am because that's fucked up that a nigga bamboozled you out of two hundred fifty. You can't be that man swindled ten million dollars. Yeah, that's some wild out shit. of hella women over years, and not only that, y'all, he's still on Instagram selling courses on how to make money. <laughs> He's still out here active like his pit boy, Simon. I'll whoop your ass. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just feel like be smarter. As women, women have to get in the mindset. And I think that that's one thing that we're so big about on this show. And I want this to always be what y'all think about when y'all think about poor minds. Mm. Women deserve everything. Mm. Men have to work for us. <laughs> They have to work for us. Me and my friend are single. And it's people out there who will be like, oh, well, how these bitches going to tell you what you deserve or what you need from a man? Because they single. They ain't even got a man. We don't have a man. No, we don't. And sometimes that should be fucking both of us up. We'd be like, where's our nigga? Where's my nigga? But because <laughs> we <laughs> don't speak for me. But at the end of the day, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's easy not trying to even be on no cocky shit. It's so easy for me to get a man. It's so easy for me to be in a relationship. Like, I literally could do that shit if I wanted to send a text right now. But these niggas just don't be Your good. Standards. They don't be good enough for me. They're mm. not good enough. They're not good enough. They don't do what they need to do. They be giving us the bare minimum. A and flight? they want us to be okay with it. And a lot of women, unfortunately, I'm not trying to jump down on y'all back, but y'all be happy to be on a first class flight. And that's what I was saying. And that's, that's what, what I was just about bitch, to say. This what you deserve. Why are you happy about that? This is what a, you deserve. A, fir- a, a flight on a private jet and a dinner at a nice spot is cool, but like we get, got into earlier. But it needs to get to a point to where it's the standard. It's the standard and it's normal. And not only that, how is this benefiting your everyday life? Yeah, a private flight is cool and a nice dinner is cool, but how is this benefiting me as a woman? But you know what? Let me not even say it's the standard because let's be realistic. It's a lot of women out there who date me and they can't afford to put them on jet or pay for them to have a first class flight. I mean, it is, friend. <laughs> I'm just and a lot of people, kidding. and a lot of those people listen to this show. No, I was kidding. So it's just like a lot of people deal with those type of guys, but even still, even in those situations on that level, he can still provide you a certain amount of luxury if he fucks with you. The aesthetics. You know, like he can provide a vibe. Yes, for you. he can still provide a vibe. Like, even if he can't afford a first class flight, okay, well, maybe you done came home from work and you had a long day and he done poured your bath up. Draw your bath. Remember, I said he, that and you got mad. You was like, who says because draw your bath? Because, bitch, it's giving 1800s. It's giving Game, of, think, Thro- it's giving game of Thrones, bitch. Yo, who, who draws somebody the bath? Somebody drew my bath for me. I was like, yeah, he drew my bath. She was like, hold on, bitch. Who says that? I said, he drew my bath, bitch. Because you've been watching too much Game of Thrones. He drew my and what's the name of that other show? The Outlander. You be watching too much of that shit because, bitch, in twenty twenty two, nobody say draw me a draw me a bath. I did. I said, can you draw me a bath? And he drew me a bath. <laughs> Andy, anyway, and it was hot. Anyway, ready, so like that's the point I was making. Even if your man cannot put you on a private jet, put you in first class, whatever, he still can create a luxury life for you within his means if he really fucks with you. Set a standard. And Simon was not setting that yes. standard. Y'all were just happy. Stop being the y'all bitch. Y'all was happy to be there because y'all exactly. never had that before. Stop being the bitch that's just happy to be there. That's what we're trying to but say. Even That's when how you I get, get bamboozled. Shit, even when I get shit that I ain't never had before, it don't make me want to give a nigga no pussy. Show me more. Speak for yourself. It don't. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I mean, it just don't. Like, I don't feel like, oh, because you did this for me, now I owe you some pussy. Because you did this because you wanted some pussy. Mm. Mood. You did this because you wanted some pussy. Okay, but what else are you going to do? Are you going to keep being Doing consistent? That. We love are you gonna keep showing me? Mm. And I was, let me not even say that. Okay, so 
at the end of the day, ladies, stop getting swindled because a guy shows you something that you've never been shown before. Like, you can be appreciative, but don't just go all in. Because you ladies be getting bamboozled. And I think that's why it was a great documentary. Because it really just kind of, I think, shed light on shit that a lot of women go through all the time. Like, even if it's not thousands of dollars like these niggas be asking y'all for two hundred dollars and not only that and don't give it back but even worse to me for your time we get swindled out of our fucking time and you can't get that back. and you can't get you can get money back a man will swindle you out of your time and you need to we need to all learn how to recognize that in the beginning stages honestly now where i'm at now i don't look past red flags no more mm -hmm. so simon you're dead we we after you What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And y'all know we are here to tell y'all about BetterHelp.com. Yeah, we love BetterHelp.com. You know, we've been using it for over a year now. I actually have just had to get a new counselor. I had another counselor, had to get a new one. And BetterHelp has made the transition so easy. And I love my new counselor. All right. So if you're a type of person, like you're always taking care of other people, it's time to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So BetterHelp.com offers therapy from the comfort of your own home. So you don't have to deal with the hassle of going to an actual office. You do everything in your bed in your couch wherever you want to do it at so absolutely we actually have a patient review mm -hmm. so so the patient review says anna has been wonderful we've been meeting for two weeks now and she has already helped me a lot i have a long way to go but i am confident that with anna's help i will get there this review was written by a better help user with issues concerning depression stress anxiety lgbt relationship issues self-esteem anger management and career difficulties Yes, yeah, so give it a try. BetterHelp has helped over 2 million people mm -hmm. get the help they need. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to betterhelp.com backslash poor minds and you're going to get 10% off of your first month. And also financial aid is available. So that's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com backslash poor minds and get 10% off. So, you know, we about to get into our favorite segment of the show, mm -hmm. Ask Poor Minds. So if y'all have any questions, you know, you can always send them to askpoorminds at gmail.com. That's A-S-K-P-O-U-R-M-I-N-D-S at gmail.com. Send your questions. Send your testimonials because honestly, we don't be knowing what the fuck going on. So sometimes we be giving y'all advice and if you fuck your life up, I'm so sorry, hun. <laughs> but still write us and let us know that too. Hey, Amen. So, Dang. question number one. It is. <laughs> hey, Lex and Drea. I've been listening to the podcast for about a year now, and I enjoy it. You ladies have opened up my eyes and taught me so much. In a recent episode, you guys were talking about how to get money and other things from a man. I decided to use the tips you gave. I asked a guy I'm currently having sex with for money, and to my surprise, he asked me when I wanted it. I have known him since 2019, and he has never given me anything. I never asked, though, because I kind of assumed he was mean. He came to my house and gave me the money that day. Ooh. After I got the money, he started acting weird. Oh, wait. <laughs> and he doesn't want to have sex with me anymore. I'm so confused. At this point, I'm assuming we are over because all of my attempts to see him have been avoided, which is unusual. What should I do? You should stop fucking with that nigga because at the end of the day, he made if he gave you some money and now he acting funny, he ain't even got it like that. Because guess what? Because the nigga who got it ain't going to act funny. And not only that, he wasn't acting funny whenever he asked for some pussy and you gave it to him. You didn't act funny with him. But not only that, it's not a, it's not an exchange like that. But what I'm saying is, if you feel some type of way, ask him. We as women need to stop being afraid to ask men what's wrong. Why you acting funny or with me? Or tell them what we or want. Or tell them how we feel because men do that to us. If they want some pussy, they ask us. If we acting funny, they ask us, hey, why you acting this way? What's wrong? What What's good? Because we give men too much power. It's okay to be like, hey, ever since this this happened i feel like you've been acting a certain type of way what's wrong you may not get the answer that you want to hear but at least you're gonna get an answer mm -hmm. and you're not in the blue and like not in the blue like in the gray like confused and don't know what's going on so i feel like open your mouth tell him i feel like you're avoiding me what's going on mm -hmm. so don't be afraid to open your mouth that's how that's how i'm moving this year for the rest of this year if you acting funny to me what's good what's going on right so yeah open your mouth girl and if he says something you don't want to hear 
On to the next. Question two. Hey, y'all. I've been dancing since I was 18. I'm 22 now. I met my boyfriend a year ago, and when we first started dating, I told him I was a dancer, and he said, yeah, we ain't gonna have none of that. But we weren't calling each other girlfriend and boyfriend at the time, so I let it roll off my shoulders. I wasn't even dancing at the time when we met because COVID still had clubs closed. But eight months into the relationship, my club started to reach out, so I started going back. I did lie about working third shift, saying I was working somewhere else for like a good month but then I told him he didn't take it well but I told him he had nothing to worry about months went by and he started distancing distancing himself so I said you know what if this is something that really bothers you then I won't do it dancing is how I pay my bills and obviously I can stop for a few months but sir you're not paying my bills and we don't live together so I'm doing it all on my own I've been wanting to go back but I'm not sure how to tell him or even if I should go back because he is loyal I don't want to risk this relationship but also I have a whole life to still live should I go back dancing or respect his wishes why Girl, you, fuck that nigga why do you men have so many requests but you don't want to help she is paying her bills and I guess I can speak from this perspective because I worked in the club for so long y'all have to realize them girls are selling a fantasy with niggas that they don't even want to fuck with and they're going home like that's what I fell in love with a girl last week at the strip club you think she tried to find me you did oh she followed me on Instagram <gasps> Hey, girl. I don't even remember, though. That whole night was a bar. But what I'm saying is, let these women make their fucking money. Obviously, you need to tell him, I, I, I believe in communication. Tell him how you feel. Tell him that you don't have nothing to worry about. But if he doesn't see that, are you trying to pay my bills? I have bills to pay. So if he's not trying to pay your bills, then this is obviously somebody that doesn't need to be in your life. Because I wish a nigga would tell me, hey, I don't like you talking about sucking my dick. Stop doing poor mind. No. I don't have much to say in regards to this question because y'all know how I feel about niggas that don't spend money. So there's that. So question number three. Period. Hello, ladies. I know y'all don't smoke anymore. Anymore. Bitch, when we ever smoked? I did smoke in high. I told I talked about that in the past episode. We yeah, I said that in the past episode. Oh, I used to smoke weed too. Okay, you used I to. I guess you got a good point. I don't, bitch, I don't smoke. You was, I called you the other day. You was like, kill a weed. Kill a weed. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it was giving Snoop Dogg. <laughs> you know what's really crazy to me? You just can lie so well with like such a straight face. And it's really scary. Because I definitely don't be smoking weed. Why did you just lie like that? I saw you smoke one weed. <laughs> Lex, really? When? The other day. What other day? What was the day? Tuesday. <laughs> Today is Tuesday. Last Tuesday. You really a liar, and that's wild. <laughs> However, I mean, I guess you're right. We did. I did used to, you know, hit the okay, reefer. Okay, finish the question. Ow. It's straight. I did used to hit the reefer back in the day. So she said, I know y'all don't smoke anymore. How would y'all feel about fucking a plug that still make you pay for weed? Thank you, and let me know if you want me to be a guest on the show. Girl, why would I want you to be a guest on the show when you paying a nigga for weed that you fucking? <laughs> You ain't got no insight to life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Why I need you to... Yeah, why do I... What would you bring to the show? Let's not do that. I fuck, no, because at the end of the day, I fuck with you because you a supporter. <laughs> Amen. But why I need you to be on this show when you're fucking somebody and paying them for weed? Because let me Cause say this. Because you only asking... Because you, although you did not say that's what you're doing... That's what you're doing. That's why you ask. Let me say this, though. Y'all have to realize, like, when weed men are selling weed, hopefully they're selling a lot of weed. So what you're smoking does not equate to what they're hopefully what selling. Fun. So you smoking a little joint, one and weed, that doesn't affect his supply. Weed. So if he's making you pay, he really don't fuck with you like that. 365, so. just blood. Bro, go to the next and question. No gonna get high you know that song yes. that's why I feel like you said that in the beginning you know the song I know kill the weed one put alright that's enough <laughs> that's enough 
Shout out to the Houston rappers. It was a lie. Okay, I got a really good Why did you zoom in like that? Because I can't see. I'm going to get too much. Hey Lex and Drea, I want to know how old is too old? I am currently 19 and in college. My friends and I got bored one day and decided to download BLK and Tinder. Is it BLK? It's probably black. And decided to download Black and Tinder. At first, I was just on there to troll and make a joke out of the apps. So I changed my dating range to 19 to 40 and I ended up matching with a 31 year old man who works at my college we met up once after I had class and it was night and it was a nice cool vibe I didn't feel uncomfortable or anything we got a little handsy and ended up kissing and I gave him head much more could have happened but I was on my period I want to fuck him and I know he wants to fuck me but I need to know if our age difference is too big we are 12 years apart I have never messed around with someone that grown before so should I continue to mess around with him or no Girl, I be fucking nigga that's, that was my daddy age. Yeah, but you're. I just. How old were you when you were fucking a nigga your daddy age? Let's let let's be honest here. Like to me, a thirty one year old man, I don't like to fuck with. I'm thirty two. I don't like to fuck with thirty year old men because I feel like they're not mature enough for me. So a thirty one year old man fucking with a nineteen year old is not nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to do, but it's like he is he girl he he wants some head. If you watch, he want to fuck. If you watch Power, it's giving Professor Milgram. That's what I'm saying. Like, girl, don't get your feelings of all. This nigga just want to fuck. He wants some young pussy because he know if he come to the big dog, so we about to we about to get what we need. Really, like he gonna have to step up to the plate. So a lot of times, men in our age range they want to deal with younger men, women because they don't ask for much. You already then gave him head just from a date. You you lost already. So because why is you giving a nigga head before he give you some? That's what I'm saying. So like as a that. as a me. If I go out, you not getting no head. You not getting nothing from me until I see what kind of person you are, and I can admit or until you give me some head. Well, not even that, but at nineteen, I can admit like I went on dates and a nigga didn't have to do nothing, but they know that. So don't let this man take advantage of you. To all the young women out there, if you're in the ages of like eighteen to twenty five, stop letting these older men take advantage of you because they're going for y'all because they feel like they can get over on y'all, and that's just me putting you and on they some game. Because a real man that's in the ages of like thirty five and up, or even thirty. Up, they're gonna get somebody their age and their age range that can handle that. And anyway, that's because they can't. So yeah, and they can get over on y'all, but that's why y'all got this. That's Amen. why, and we gonna tell it, cause fuck y'all, cause yeah, girl, yeah, it's giving, it's giving predator. I won't say predator, but it's, it's just giving predator. Take it, take it. It's giving take advantage. Mm-hmm. Whoa. I've been waiting on this the whole episode. Shoot, new, new, new. Late night, I thought to back. Oh, when we made good love, uh, listening to some Marvin Gaye oh all night long. And now I want that old flame back. Make these moments once again get comfort. So won't you, so won't you. Mm-mm. Do it for us, baby. Come on. Good, Good loving body, rocking, knocking boots all, all night, night long. Oh. Oh. Making love until we tired to the break of dawn. Oh, oh come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Turn the lights down and, and let, let me get, get on, on it. it. Yeah. Cause when I do this, me and you, it'll be so right. Oh, 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 oh. Bro. <laughs> so give me that good love. Somebody rockin' knockin' up. That was a good harmony. So give me that good love. Somebody rockin' knockin' up. And give me that good love. Somebody rockin' knockin' up. Ooh. You better sing that shit. I feel so good when I'm near you. Sing, drop you. That's why I always want to be close to you. I'm so addicted. I'm so addicted to making love. Ooh. <laughs> now y'all don't get Great, shut the hell up. Great, come on. Ooh. I fucking did. Stop lying to this bitch. He's on my, ooh. First of all, they not lying. 
hating. No, no, are they lying good. or are you a hater? No, no, you sound no. good. You sound good. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> Come on. A good love. No. Oh. To make it oh. to Okay. You, okay. Baby. All night long. Ooh. Baby. All night long. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Okay. A good love and body rock knocking booth all night long. <laughs> uh-huh. We gotta hold the ear for you. Make it love until we tie it till on the break. Of you did dawn. that, yeah. Oh, oh, come yeah, on, come on, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you felt that. Oh, come <laughs> on, oh, come on. That's how you got I'm good love and body rock knocking booth all night long. Oh. Bro, ooh, get me in the studio, bro. He was in the studio, like, oh, oh, oh come on, oh, come on, a late night. Shut up, H. When we make good love, somebody rock and knock and knock. Listen to some love and get all oh, night. You so now see, we gotta do it you, together. We gotta do it all oh, night long. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I hate this show. I hate it here. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Shout out to H-Town. Because uh, that's where we from, too. Period. And, they, uh, and our piece of that man. What's his name? Dino. Oh. Shout out to Dino. I'm not holding your hand because you tried to play me like I didn't know his hey, name. Hey, Dino's baby mama is married to Joe Rogan. Weird, strange fact. Crazy, right? Do you know what the great thing about poor minds is? You won't get these jokes. A fact that you don't know. You won't get these for jokes, no reason. but you also gonna get some education. <laughs> that you didn't care about or care to know. But, yeah. but now you know. Joe Rogan's uh, wife is Dino's baby mama. Crazy, Damn, right? and shout out to him, because that nigga was fine. He was. He could have definitely got this for CRB. See y'all next week. <laughs> Cause what, bro? He was. You're hot. Okay, so you gonna act like Tupac okay. couldn't have got this pussy? He could have, but he's dead. And I hate to say that because it sounds crazy. Dead. California, Larry. not California. <laughs> California. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs>